God wants to multiply your life. He wants to multiply the effect you have on life. He wants to multiply your love, your blessing. He wants to, mul- not just add, multiply who, you're, who you are to, to the world, the blessings that are flowing from you. But you got to commit. Many of you know that the harbinger in the book came because I was in the airport. And I'm in the airport, but this is a perfect example. And I wrote the book, and I didn't know what to do with it, how to do it. And people are saying, oh, go to this, go do this one, go to this publisher, this publisher, make a name, all that. I said, no. I just bowed my head, and I was waiting. I knew I had to do it the whole week, but I could not do it until I went to the airport. That's the only time I had, and it was, the airport was, it was like five, it was like, well, I was there at three in the morning. It was after a Friday service. I left at five in the morning, was in Charlotte about seven in the morning. I bowed my head, and what I did is I committed it to God. That's what I did. I wrote that. Now, I don't know what would happen if I didn't commit it to God, but I committed. I said, Lord, this is yours, not mine. This book is yours. You do it your way. You have your way. You move it. You have your way. You do it by your hand, not by people. And that's when I looked up, and that's when the man is sitting next to me on my left and says, says, so what's the good word? And then he gives me this prophetic word, ends up through this man, the book goes forth to America. But it came first, I had to commit it to God. Commit your derech, your way to God, and he will establish it. Now, if God said, listen, I don't want you to do that book, he'd have something better for me. But you have to do it. I, had, I knew that, you know, the guy is right there. The God put him there. He canceled his flights because of the weather. Kept canceling his flights until he was put on my flight, put next, sitting next to me not knowing who I was, just to the moment I prayed. But I still had to commit it. If I didn't commit it, I don't know if that would happen. Would it be that, wait, God wasted all that time and brought all this guy here and all that, and then I didn't commit? Well, God knew I would. You know, but if he knew I wouldn't, he'd probably keep the guy on the other plane. But it's so, it tells you how important. Everything that came from that came from that prayer of committing, doing this thing right here, commit your way to God. And he shall do it. No limitation of it. There's no limitation on it. It's just it. It's it. Well, what, well, what do I need him to do? It's it. Whatever he's going to do, it's going to be it. It's going to be it. It's going to be that thing. Now, let me give you one, well, as we bring it, I'm bringing it home. Because this, guys, take this. This is not about, it's not about knowledge. I mean, it, it is knowledge, but it's not about, but it's about apply this and God will do it. That's the whole point. God wants to do it. In Mark 6, 41, it says they, they presented their loaves of bread. You know the famous, they didn't have enough bread, didn't have enough fish, multitudes and thousands of people. The Lord says, Who, what do you have? And it says, this is it. This is it. Just this bread, just these loaves of bread, this fish. It says they presented it. The word that they says they presented this, they didn't have enough. The word is in Greek, poreth themi, which means which, you know what the word means? It means committed. Commit. The same thing, it says commit to the Lord. Well, they took their bread and they committed it to the Lord. They rolled it to God. Same thing. The word means commit. Same thing. It's the same word in Acts 20, verse 32. It says, it says I pray that, you, that I commit you to God. Same word. Commit the bread. Commit people to God. Acts 14, 23, it says th- these committed them to God, committed people to God. So here they're presenting, they're presenting bread, fish, not much, not much, but what happens to the bread? What happens to the fish? Miracle, miracle, multiply, miracle. But if they, but notice they first had to commit it to God. So they didn't have enough, but they committed it. And then God does this thing. What's that saying? You look at your life, and sometimes, again, you're looking at your life, and you're looking at, you're looking at what you have and what you don't have, and it may not seem like you have enough, or you don't have what you want. God's saying, that doesn't matter. Commit what you have to me. Even if it's not, I don't have enough. Commit not enough to me. Whatever you have, it's a symbol of your life. Commit it, commit it to God, and what'll happen? Who ya say? He'll do it. So they committed it to Messiah, who is God. They committed it, and what happened? He did it. He did it. 
He multiplied it. God wants to multiply your life. He wants to multiply the effect you have on life. He wants to multiply your love, your blessing. He wants to mul- not just add, multiply who, your, who you are to, to the world, to who, w- the blessings that are flowing from you. But you've got to commit. There's nobody who sees that, who knows it, who lives it, who has not committed to God. And not just once, committed to God. Do it with whatever you have. He will multiply it. You know, you know I'm not going to do the story, but you know that we, we, we got the, the building, the other building, because we, we did something so stupid and crazy and foolish and ridiculous. We, we, it was dead. They weren't going to give it to us. It was over. We circled it seven times like Joshua. But what was that about? It was about committing it to God. It was because, because if you're doing that, you're either crazy or you're crazy about God. You're crazy enough. You believe God. You're committing it not to people, not to you're, God. You do it. Next morning, we got the building. Next morning, commit your way to God and he will do it. Your life is God's gift to you. Your time is God's gift. What you do with it is your gift to God. Present it back to him. Commit your heart, mind, soul, strength, talents, resources, whatever you got. doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are. Commit it to God and He will multiply it. Look at the people in the Bible that God did it for them. Abraham committed and God did it. Moses committed everything to God. God did it. Paul committed everything God did. The priest with the Ark of the Covenant, they had to commit, they had to step out in faith to go on there. You know, you know, Peter, to step out on that boat, that was a committing to God. Lord, Gideon had to just go forward to God. Lord, you said it, I trust you, I'm going. That's committing, I commit to God. The blind man, the pool of Siloam, had to go, you know, he said, he didn't just heal him, he said, go down. So he got to, he's blind, he's going down. He's committed, he's trusting God, he's committing the whole thing. The lame man who didn't walk, everybody had to take that step, I committed to God. Naaman had to go seven times in the Jordan, he was trusting God, committing. Things happen when you step out in faith, entrusting everything to God. You do is like, don't live a life that never steps out. Don't live a walk that never goes all out. It's never, you're never going to, it's a half-life. You don't want a half-life. You want the full thing. That way, don't live your life, rest your life wavering back and forth. How long, Elijah said, are you going to waver back, back and forth between two opinions? Make your decision once and for all. If the Lord is God, serve him. Choose you this day whom you shall serve the Lord. Because you serve a God who actually, here's the other part, he's the God who committed everything to you. I mean everything to you. He, 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 galal, he rolled his life to you. He gave every single thing to you. So the least we can do is say yes and we're going that same way. Amen. Same way. Because when, when his commitment to you is matched by your commitment to him in any way, watch out because that's dynamite. That's explosive. It's life changing. It's history changing. It's world changing. That's Paul. That's, that's the apostles. It's victory. It's life on life. It's victory. Then he will do it. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you, but I have something to say. You really should be committed. No, really. You should be committed to the Lord who committed himself to you. This is Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for watching. The Josiah Manifesto and all my books you can get anywhere, Amazon, wherever books are sold. Shalom.